Hello everybody, Trends Tactics is back. Uh, we are very busy, both of us, we have a lot of projects going on, but we still wanted to at least squeeze in a tiny episode, even if it's not as long as the usual ones, but we want to continue our tactics training. Today's Friday again. Thanks for joining us, thanks for being patient. Lawrence, your stage, uh, it's great to see you. Lovely to see you too as well, Anna. Um, and hello again to everybody. Uh, we're back and ready for some more tactics in a in a very tense environment in the world of chess. Uh, we've obviously been witnessing over the past uh, few uh, uh, weeks now, actually, the controversy around Magnus Carlsen and Hans Niemann, uh, Magnus's defeat to Hans. Uh, in the Sinkfield Cup, his reluctance thereafter to play hands, resigning on move two in their recent battle, just outright refusing to play hands. Um, and as far as I can see, we're going to get clarification on that matter next week, apparently. So very curious. We'll so, see. Yeah. The fun fact about it is that uh, I've met a lot of people which I uh, haven't met before in the last uh, couple of weeks. And uh, many of them who have nothing to do with chess were like, ah, you're, you're, you're a chess base. Uh, so what about this Niemann thing? Or what about Carlsen at the moment? So because it's just worldwide uh, going all around, it's, uh, it's quite funny. It really is. It's worldwide and it's... Uh making uh, even uh, some comedy shows. Uh, Stephen Colbert made his show yeah. in the US, his nightly show. So it's become front page news, obviously with some silly theories to, for, for, to make it more interesting about how hands might be cheating. Um, so yeah, so that's what the chess world is looking forward to getting clarity on before we move forward. But. Yes. We have yes. tactics to do first. Tactics never stop amongst the uh, controversy. Luckily, luckily. And luckily. We, have, we have someone uh, which is very, very special today. And I'm very happy you chose this uh, celebrity of chess today. As you have seen in our former episodes, which you can see all the time. They're timeless, quite timeless at least. Um, you can solve the tactics as many as you want. Do this program, keep this training up. I've sp spoken to a lot of uh, title players also in the last couple of weeks, and they are doing, as you already mentioned before, they're doing their tactics training like every, every single day. And not sometimes uh, 15 minutes, sometimes half an hour, but even sometimes a couple of hours. Unbelievable. believable. Yeah. Yeah, there's no... Uh, you know, there's no amount of tactics that are, is bad for you, right? It's not like eating chocolate. If you if you do tactics all day, it's as long as you're not too tired. It, how how bad can it be? So, <laughs> yeah. um, so we're gonna look at some tactics by Judith Polgar. You know, Judith, uh, she really doesn't need an introduction. Uh, she's one of the rare rare people who don't. Uh, but for those who don't know all of her accolades very quickly. The greatest woman player of all time. Hands down, it's not a debate. She's the only woman ever to make the top 10 in the world. True. She's beaten a number of world champions over the board in classical chess um, and was a prodigy becoming a grandmaster, I believe, at the age of 14. And is, of course, part of the Polgar trio, the sisters, the Polgar sisters, Zuza and Sophia, all of whom I know pretty well, especially wow. Judith. I speak to Judith a lot. That's so cool. And yeah. um, she's a fantastic ambassador for chess. She retired a few years ago. She has a family, but she still does chess work, chess education. She is very involved with in Hungary, in her native Hungary. She also does a lot of commentary. And in her playing days, she was... One of the most fierce attacking players of all time. Amazing eye for yeah. tactics. Uh, she could beat you up uh, easily if you didn't, uh, if you, if you, if you uh, didn't come in form. So we're going to start with a game of hers against Gdansky. Sounds from like her a native Budapest, nineteen techno band. No, but it is Gdansky. <laughs> Gdansky. 
Yeah, um, of course, also uh, heard of Gdansky playing some good games in the 90s since I was this avid uh, chess schach magazine reader. Um, yeah, yeah. Now, okay, so for you at home, of course, you can see all the details in the Chess Base News article with all the games which are shown on this site. So I would expect you to download them, put them in your tactics repertoire folder and do your tactics training. Also, you can always stop the video for now. I already am quite sure it has to be a certain beautiful tactic here because I cannot see anything else. I'm, I haven't uh, calculated all of it yet, but it must be. Okay. It must be queen takes g6, right? Well, we certainly start with the checks as, mm, as we do in each, but we need to fi find the follow-up and we need to be a little bit careful because obviously queen sacrifices it's a bit you know, they're the favorite sacrifice any player wants to make. It gives you a sense of uh, pleasure, but we also need to have the follow up. So, so yeah, let's let, let me try to follow up after queen takes g6. So also I'm doing this in my head. And for those who, of you who cannot follow, just play the game on the board in the chess base news article uh, to, to keep up with it. Unless I would also try to use your head for all of this because on the chessboard you have to use your head after all and uh, have to think about the moves in, in front. So queen takes g6, of course uh, black has to take back otherwise it's immediate checkmate. Mm -hmm. And then comes the move h7 check. Now the king only has the move f7 left. I would um, Give another check on g5 with my knight. Again, the king only has one move left, which is mm -hmm. e8. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is almost how far I got because um, I would love to put my bishop on h5, but there is still a pawn. So I would just maybe get a queen on h8. I think mm -hmm. black cannot take back. Otherwise, it's a checkmate. Mm -hmm. And I do not see any huge threat from black side. So this is my conclusion. Is it close or did I miss yeah, something? Yeah, you're almost spot on. Oh, and in no. fact, I'm, tr I'm trying to work out if something. there is a difference between what was played in the game mm. and your variation. Because maybe Judith the, did indeed take. Maybe the move order is incorrect. Yeah, and so... You did actually play the move h8 equals queen here. Yeah, this is another idea I had, to be honest. Yeah, and yes, it is It is correct. It is correct after I see it. Because now uh, it's it's um, it's a forced checkmate, right? Well, so, I thought because that, but if after king e8... We just take the rook. Ah! That's the trick, right? Yes. Well done, Anna. Yeah, yeah. So yes, and the other beautiful. way around, I don't think, I think if the move order is different, if we get the knight in first, yes. then is there a chance to, I don't know, play the knight to e7 maybe? Some, maybe, or take... Something like that. I, I doubt, Even yeah. Even this move. True, that's a nice one, right? yes. This, <laughs> and suddenly it's not yes. mate and it might be almost unclear. almost ah that's just so yeah very important the move order mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well done thanks brilliant thanks yeah all right i'm, I'm back on track you're back after on track. all those weeks <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> on to the next go. holgar against matter from 1990 hmm. um this one i actually struggled with i'll be honest with you um took me a while because at first it looks like i mean why does got everything she wants right two bishops two rooks uh you know all of these pieces concentrated on the queen side but uh, on the king side rather but uh you know i don't see somehow how to like, play. I couldn't yeah. figure out the way. It took me, it there, took me a while. There's, of course, also this little thread. I don't know how, how strong it is, but there's always this G2 check from black side. Exactly. So this is something to take care of. Now, let's, uh, yeah. So what I will do first is, like, give the checks. As you already know, our go-to list, which has been taught by Lawrence many, many times, mm -hmm. 
give the checks, give the take the pieces and give the threats. So we will take give a check on h7. It doesn't look very convincing to me. I think if the king takes, um, I actually, well, there is a rook takes f5 actually, but then g6, rook h5, oh. <laughs> that's actually working wait what's what? that what are you looking at here so, i'm curious I, I... no so king, a queen takes h7 king takes back rook takes f5 ah. wow now the threat of g2 is not that big because the king just goes to g1 i think there's mm -hmm. too many moves black can make unfortunately but there's still this threat of rook going to h5 which is checkmate immediately no, it is King G8. Oh, what am I watching? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you don't even have to play G6. Yeah, you but can then, play Knight. Yeah, well, we would have... A... You can play King G8 immediately. Yeah, yeah that doesn't work. What Arne no, is saying, work. guys, is... The brilliant Queen takes H7, King takes H7, Rook takes F5, hoping for <laughs> move G6... <laughs> After which, rook h5 check and rook h8 um, uh, will be mates on the next move. But unfortunately, black is not obliged to play g6. Black can just play, for example, g8. Yeah. And after rook h5, it's not even mate threatened. It's not a game of hope chess, unfortunately. You could play f6. Can you really play f6 after oh, bishop, bishop c4? c4. Ah, that's curious. <laughs> um, knight f6 knight is, f6 my first is unfortunate. No, it's also also interesting. No, is it? Takes on f6, rook e3. Too slow. Way it's too, too slow, slow, right? Like even bishop g7 blocks, right? Yeah. Oh, so, okay, I mean... okay, okay, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that isn't correct. Okay. No. Good though. So then let's just carry on. I mean, let's just take on f5 with the queen because okay. So why this not? is why not, right? You're threatening mate. And now you also know that if he goes g6, blocking, at the very worst case, you come back to h3, yeah. very worst. Yeah. You've picked up a pawn and the attack continues, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so the critical line then is bishop takes g2, jack, king g1 only move, and now g6. Yeah, we cannot really go back here anymore. Now, oh, there is uh, queen takes f7. Queen takes f7, rook takes f7, wow. king takes f7 probably, and the bishop goes to c4. How many spaces does the king have? None. That's the checkmate. Uh, well, the bishop can go in between, but that'll seal the deal. Now the question is, of course, does the king have to take back? And... Well, let's say black played a move like bishop to d5. Yeah, exactly. Well, you're not material down here as white. I ain't. And after rook d7, black Correct. has even more problems. Right, because it's the same thing. If he goes yes. here, you just take Beautiful. bishop c4. And the bishop cannot remain on the diagonal. It has to go to a2. And then very sad. the very cute move b3, right? Yeah. Correct. And now we just <laughs> set this up. I like Beautiful. That. Wow. Locking that bishop out, huh? That's so cool. That's very, such very a... nice. And that really happened in the game. This is always a little yes. surprise for me. I mean, there's grandmaster games like some. We you have been covering loads of the best players in the world, and the yes. very, very best players in the world. And they have actually those tactics on the board and they really commit to them it's unbelievable sometimes right exactly so was this the correct solution yes, yes right? this is yeah. correct there's this is no... what happened this is what happened there's nothing which is there any i mean you don't have to take on g2 i guess well i mean if you don't take on g2 again if you go g6 oh yeah yeah we just have the pawn more yeah that was the in thing, fact right? you might have queen takes f7 here excuse me Oh, that is so true. Same idea. That right? is so true. It's working. It's working. It's working even better. Nice. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, we have a whole piece more there. All right. 
All right, good. On a roll, on a roll. All right. Let's look at the next one. All right, this one we have to flip around. Klimova Polgar good. from the famous Thessaloniki Olympiad 1988. I believe, and I'll double check now, um, <laughs> that uh, it was the 28th Olympiad and Hungary did indeed win. So Judith Polgar, along with her sister Zuza and Sofia, beat the legendary Soviet Union team at this Olympiad, mm -hmm. featuring the likes of Chiburninadze, Levit, Levitina, who were higher rated, and they won by just a half point. And Judith Polgar, by the way, won gold medal on board two. Guess her score out of 13 games. Gold medal should be more, almost more than 10, right? On board 12 two? 12 oh, and a on. half. 12 and a half oh. out of 13. Disappointing this half point. <laughs> yeah, almost the perfect score. Also. 96.2%. Uh, it's insane. So. Uh, just uh, for you at home, if you haven't read the fascinating story about the sisters, uh, we don't want to go into details, but it is uh, very, very, very interesting. Uh, it all started kind of as an experiment, but we have loads of chess-based articles which are moving to this. So, let us continue here. There's no checks. This is nice. That means we don't have to check the checks. Right. But I, I have a variation in my head, and I just want to play it out, which is um, knight takes g2. So you want to destroy the defenses just, around the king. Yes. There are no other captures. Oh, well, bishop takes h3 exists, but that, sure. that, that doesn't look so. Knight takes g2, yeah. a queen takes. And now we continue our sacrificing of the beautiful light uh, uh, minor pieces, which is uh, now bishop h3. Wow. And queen takes. And now we shift our rook to f6. And this Brilliant. is how far I was calculating, and it looks just very crushing in my opinion. It looks crushing. For who is the question, though? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, there's a check. Quite a, quite a relevant check. Now, I don't know if you blundered and managed to somehow magically survive. Um... <laughs> But, I mean, like, queen takes h7, check, king f8, queen h8. Like, if I go check, if can I play like this? We just take with the rook. I don't think it... And bishop takes. Oh. Oh, that is so sneaky. Yeah. We just have... Well, is it working? Well, after the check, of course, the king will move. I'm going to put my king move. in yes. the firing line. That is cray cray. You have queen That's, h5 here. Yeah, queen h5 is also what I'm seeing. But then maybe rook h1. Exactly. And I mean, you are a rook and a bishop down for the moment. So I can always just give a rook back. Yeah, I oh, am a complete. Oh. After all of after the dust has settled, I am one bishop down. And that. Yeah. Is not working exactly so always oh, be dear uh, yeah a little just be careful okay Queen didn't even see it like not even <laughs> a, it's crazy yeah so how about we shift our rook now we make a silent move i don't think there is any oh wait oh man I hate that move not working not working oh boy hmm okay this is going to be a bit more challenging how about you at home have you made any progress here well what happens after queen h4 i mean can we just threat to take on h3 no that seems like a much more reasonable move to me just to threaten to take on h3 yeah and i don't see a way to stop that it's very brutal well there is right. a check on e7 oh well no not really no because then we can just take it exactly right so i think white has what to about go... bishop d Eight. Well, in the worst case scenario, you take 
and now you're only in exchange down. Actually, and you can even come come back, back. yeah. (laughs) And white is toast, right? So I don't think you can do that. I think Klimova played the only move. It's probably still losing, but King G1. Yeah. The point being that after Bishop takes H3, Queen H1, trying to survive. Okay. Can I finally shift my rook over to F6 now? No. I Absolutely. can't. Yeah. I mean, I. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. The threat is h6, not not g6. Yeah. Right. And after bishop d8. That one again. Well, we now we just take on d8. I would just take on d8 now. Rook h6. Mm. Queen shifts to g5. Come on, this cannot be working for all me. All these pieces, it looks good, huh? Looks amazing. Okay, what about knight to e6? This was actually the game, mm-hmm. just so you know. So annoying. Why can white defend all of this? I have to find something more nice. What about, oh, I'm seeing something. Oh, this is crazy. I think it's really working. Mm -hmm. And once again, I think I only know about this tactic right now, which I'm seeing because we have done our training in the last couple of months. There were a couple of games which had like some similar ideas. I think Queen E7. What's the idea? Queen A7 checkmate. You're a genius. Correct. Mm. Yeah. That is Queen so A7. cool. And it's so difficult yes. to see because it's not yes. very, it's not a usual thing, actually. But this is so, it's so brutal because it's how to stop that. Well, you, you can't stop it. That's the point. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the main thing. You can't stop it. I guess you can go rook f2. Yeah, but after queen a7. And rook f1. Yeah, but no, it's gosh, it. it's terrible. Awful. It's terrible. Okay, totally okay, okay. gone. Okay. Well done. Nice. Anna, brilliant. Thank Very you. Very nice. So oh, beautiful. a few yeah. hiccups along the way. I think that, <laughs> I think that example really... Uh, makes us realize how how careful we have to be, right? In terms of uh, watching out for our opponent's resources, watching out for our opponent's uh, counterplay. Truly. Right. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, okay. Let's save that. Okay. Black again here to play. This mm-hmm. is Tisdall against Polgar. 1988 Black to play. What do we think? Mm-hmm. What are we thinking? That looks interesting. So we have a couple of checks here, which are all suspicious because they don't look very threatening. We have a check on a1. The king takes back. I don't see the purpose in it. I mean, mm-hmm. we can give another check and then we just have a rook less. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think this no. one and is... Queen a4 check, uh, rook takes, rook takes, king goes to b3. There's yeah. no. You have to look at that. I mean, so bravo for looking at that because sometimes okay. that's a mating construction, but not here. Good. So then we have to take a piece. What happens after we take e4? The queen probably takes back, has to take back, actually. Um, and then. I also don't see any forcing follow-up. So how about we try to make a threat? One of the threats I'm looking at is... uh, Hmm. It's it's, it's curious. You know, this one I'm going to give you the... um, When you've got an idea... Yeah. Don't completely rule it out. See if you can make it work. That's all I can say. Okay. Mention something. Okay, okay. 
So after taking e4 and queen takes e4, I think this is what Lawrence wants to push me to. Mm -hmm. Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. Well, how can we, I don't see any concrete plan to follow up yet. Now, okay, let's just go with the queen to b5 and threaten taking on a5 maybe. Or even d5. What is happening here? What what should white play now? Is this just... Good question. A... I don't know is the answer. Yeah, it's really stuck. So there's no check on e8. We can no. take on h4. <sighs> We take back. Um. Huh. Ah, this is this is a tricky one. No, this is this is potentially a good move. A very logical move. Now I don't see a mate. I just see like I can. I think I can win a pawn, maybe. But yeah, you win a pawn. So let's say something like, I don't know, rook takes. So rook H4. takes and takes back. Oh, okay. Ah, you uh, want to take back. You don't want to give this vision show. Uh, yeah. Maybe it's vision shaft is better. Let's give it vision shaft because the king has to move. Now we can take back. And now we have some threats, finally. Probably, okay. yeah. It looks a bit dangerous, right? I mean, I mean after may... rook b4 check, everything's over. So, so yeah, if I go like c4... That has to Might just hold on here. Can we well. just win a queen? No, we cannot like this. b5. That's, yeah, that'll do. We... Well... That'll possibly. teach you. <laughs> possibly but even this i'm not sure is is kind of mate yet um uh -huh. it's, it might be close it might be close actually yeah so not played not played yeah what about no. the very crazy move before now oh then we give a check on d5 okay forget it Oof, what to do here? Uh, rook g4, maybe? No, I mean, it's really interesting. Okay, so I'm going to give you a clue. It is regarding a mating net pattern. Really? Yeah, it is. I it didn't is. see that. But uh, I don't even know what white can play here. I mean, sorry, let me go back. It's queen b5 still on board. So it's this position here. Polgar actually found a way to, <sighs> to end force the game. stuff. Yeah, basically at once. Crazy. It's a mating net concept. <sighs> wow. I'm, yeah, this is nice. Okay, this is the first time I'm really struggling here today with you did i am yeah i'm kind of in a situation where i cannot find a great really challenging move now i have to take a look at some moves okay w what uh, so what was the issue with queen a from yeah this move was cute right but the, the rook, king could come out yeah right? the rook takes right so rook takes rook takes the king comes out so You gotta be kidding me. This is actually how it is. Then the rook goes to, I don't know, h4. Not h4, because the rook's already on h4. You mean h3. The rook is already on h4 here. Oh, wait. No, no. I, after the variation, I thought the rook goes back. But now I understand. Okay. So the rook goes to h3 first. This is actually one move I was considering at first. 
So rook h3. So which rook? But I didn't. This one. Uh, the the h1. Okay. But rook I didn't H3. want to take it away from the last row. Sure. Okay. But the queen has to go somewhere. So the queen has to go somewhere and keep protection of the rook. And the only square actually looks like e2. Mm, that is so crazy. Queen a4 check. Rook no. takes. Rook takes. And it's really checkmate on h1. Are you kidding me? Oh, I'm no. not kidding you. Oh, I'm disappointed that I didn't see that. That was actually not that hard. I hope you at yeah. home did better than me here. I hope people at home did better as well. But I mean, it it wasn't easy though, I would say. Okay, thanks. It wasn't easy. I feel better. No, it, it, it absolutely <laughs> was not easy. It absolutely was not easy. In my opinion, Rook H3. I just should yeah. have committed to that too because it. Was I mean, a, it was an option. I'm, I'm sure Polgar had dreams of this idea, and then she saw this, and she said, "Well, can I find it? Find a way anyway." And she yeah. found it with this brilliant move. Brilliant. Do brilliant. we have one last one, or was it? Yeah, that? one last. Oh, nice. Uh, okay. no, that's it. That's, that's it. All I got. Today. We solved them. We solved them. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, this was our a little bit shorter episode because we have to run, both of us, yes. right now already. Yes. So everybody, thank you very much for tuning in once again. We will try to put this on regularly again. Yes. No? yes. We, 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 yes. we will do our everything for this. And uh, thanks for your likes. Thanks for your comments. See you soon. See you soon. Bye-bye.